gamekeeper. So primarily my job is to look after game birds before the shooting season, up through the shooting season and even after the shooting season. Um, so that is my job in a nutshell to be honest. Start October. Yeah. Uh, Partridge starts in September. We don't, we don't start shooting at all until October. Um, when we shoot through right to the end of January, it always gets quicker than what it ever feels like. It literally, you, you click your fingers and it's January and it's done. Um, some, 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 some days in, in January I'll be wishing it over, but it does go extremely, extremely fast the, the amount of days we have to cover. Ride clearance, pen maintenance. There's, there is literally always something to be do, to be done. There's never, there's never not time for nothing to be done. Um, I'm blessed in the fact that I've got very good friends, uh, and family as well that, that help me. Um, whether it be from cutting trees to pushing birds back of an evening to feeding to to getting a strimmer out. I've got so it's kind of a Good community that we like help each other, especially 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 my my beating team that I've got I've got we've, 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 it's got we've got quite a good team we help each other out. My wife's got this um, kind of ongoing joke as soon literally as soon as soon as poults are delivered, as soon as young birds are delivered, she literally waves goodbye to me until, until the end of January. So I'm lucky I'm lucky in, in the fact that I've got a very very understanding and supportive wife. She's 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 gone, she understands it all and. Um, if I've got if I've had a long day or anything like that, she she understands why she understands what it's all about. I think I think, I think that's the whole the whole reason behind it. It's just education. It's, it's what a lot of people don't understand what it is about. People just think it's a group of rich rich blokes shooting 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 in a field wearing a tweed, and they don't understand ninety five percent of the work. That's gone into putting one of those birds over them guns, and there is a lot more work that goes into it than what folk realise. I don't believe there's hotels, there's restaurants. We we employ a chef on shoot days. Um, I've got a team of 20 beaters, four or five people picking up with the dogs, and so that's 36 people in a day, and not even including me, that are, that, are, that, are, that are coming out and. If we're out a couple of days a week, if not more, it goes into, into a considerable amount of time. A lot of the, a lot of my beaters are retired, so they have it as kind of a bit of an extra income to the retirement. They they're old countrymen, really. To be honest, but I've also got people that specifically book days off work to come and enjoy a day in the countryside to work their dogs, yeah. to just enjoy the atmosphere, just to enjoy the plants that that we. Have, to be honest, and um, I have quite a few people who are. Yeah. Kev, Kev get the nail on the head earlier. He said, uh, What is it? Is it, is it, a, is it a poacher turned gamekeeper? And I, I kind of smirked to myself. Um, no, I grew, I grew, up, grew up working working ferrets and always, always keeping lurchers and things like that. I've always been interested in country sports, and, and it just slowly progressed from there. Uh, I just loved being outside. Love being outside. I've never been one for being cooped up. I, was, I could never work in an office or anything like that. Yeah. And I've always been interested in learning about just nature in general, um, especially especially wood and trees and just the countryside and things like that. And it's just it just yeah, it just went from there. It's not a honing class as a job. It's it's I literally I get paid to do my hobby. It's so it's it's kind of win win in that in that sense. 
think once if you keep her or anything like that, you, you can't you can't really shut off because you pheasant see it, you pheasant see game birds, you stock or whatever. They, they, they are your, your livestock in effect. So mm -hmm. they, 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 you can't get any more free range of them. Because once about the pens, they're gone. You you've got to direct them to where you want them on a shoot day. Um, but they're under our care still. So we've still got to feed them. We've still got to water them. We've still got to protect them from from foxes, from any other predators like that. We've, we've still got to protect them. And that in itself takes up a, a huge amount of time. And I think people like, like just, they don't, they don't understand that. They just think, they just think that people just turn up in the countryside, stand in a field, shoot a few hundred pheasants, and then that's it. I take especially the care of our birds very, very seriously. Um, whether it's from feeding them to make sure they've got the right water and minerals and supplements, to the security of the estate, to make sure it's looked after, to make sure that there's not no one wandering about in the woods that there shouldn't be, and that we've got protection dogs and things like that. And I just think folk need to respect that these pheasants and these partridges are, are people's jobs. Yeah. And if a keeper has a bad season or two, that keeper can lose his job, he can lose his house. It can lose a lot of things, and if that's supporting the family, that can be detrimental to, to, to that person. Um, this this trust set up like the Gamekeepers Welfare Trust that support people, uh, Gamekeepers predominantly, um, if they're struggling. My capital shooting is, is my enjoyment where rifles, shotguns and things like that, I just literally, it's just a, it's just a hammer to me, it's just a, it's just a tool. So if I have to go and shoot a fox or shoot a fox, it's just, just my job. I get a lot more satisfaction of shooting a bottle top or a lighter with a, with a cat ball at 20 metres than I do with shooting a fox at 250 yards with a rifle. And it's just finding that thing what you enjoy. Um, it's just, yeah, my, 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 my downtime on I'm really enjoying watching the transformation of catapults and different builders. Um, I've had John Jeffries make me a couple of special catapults recently. Um, one I've, I've, I've shot with. Yeah, uh, tell us about this. Is this the one with the yeah, pheasant? Yeah, it's, 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 it's the Mustang in, in the design of a cock pheasant. And um, a good bit of thought went into it, to be honest. I'm a big believer in. If we're, if we're going to have some, if, you, if you're going to have something, it should be kind of a purpose. It should be for, it should represent that person. And obviously, being a gamekeeper, I wanted, I wanted a, a couple of catapults. I wanted a couple of catapults to represent that. And John literally hit the nail on the head with this Mustang. And I've really, I've really enjoyed plinking with it at the start. I think the first five or six shots, I was shooting the bottle top off at you know, 10 metres and I thought, yeah, I like this. And then I slowly, slowly started using it more and more. And he built me an, an, an apex as well in the design of a hen pheasant. So I've got kind of a, a cock and a hen thing going on. You've got to believe that if you get what you pay for. And there's some very good builders out there that you might have to pay a bit more money with, but the quality of what they're tuning out is unbelievable. It's unbelievable. and. Buy cheap, buy twice. That's what I, I believe. And if I want to look at something and be happy with it, I'm more than happy to spend a bit of money on it. Mm -hmm. Hence why I bought Frank off John. I've got, I've got a few more. I've, well, planning another one, hopefully with um, Asa soon. And as if there's a, I've, I've always got these little ideas in my head of how I want it to be. And these aren't just standard run of the mill cast catapults. They're, 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 they'll be special to me. And they won't go anywhere. Um, so I'm not fussed about spending that little bit of extra money on them. And I just think this stigma around it being like a cheap thing, and cheap, ex ultra accessible sport, it's got to be, like people, like people were mentioning about the entry fees of some competitions recently, I think Solid Ball, I was speaking to a few folks about the entry fees being a bit overpriced things like that and in hindsight what's what's 30 quid it's takeaway a month or 
or something like that. And if it's something to support that sport and how it's going to progress within the next five to ten years, then I think everyone collectively should embrace it and we should try and push forward with it and not be so stingy and just sit back and think that what, 15, 15, 16, 17 years ago when I started shooting catapults and things like that, it was completely different to what it is now. And my, my son's three now, when he's, in 50, when he's 18 to 20, I can't even imagine of no. what slingshots and catapults, what, what, what it's going to be like that in the UK for him. I know the direction I wanted to go in for him, and I wanted to keep going in the direction it's going for him, but I find it very frustrating when I'm seeing things posted online and I hear things on a grapevine of people saying things to me, obviously being a gamekeeper of the game. I know someone recently that's had 60, 70 pots shot by lads with catapults. I think it was done in the middle of the night and they were just left. And he knew it was from the catapults because he dug, he dug into them and got all the, got all the steel shot out of them. And he messaged, he messaged me knowing obviously that I shoot catapults and things like that. And he knows me personally. Kind of asked me, what's, what's this about, Sam? Why are they doing this? And I couldn't explain it. Because it's, it's, it's not me. It's not how I perceive it. It's not what I'm about. It's not my ways. I wouldn't, I, I, there's no, I wouldn't find any, any enjoyment in going to shoot 60 volts in a pen in the middle of the night. I just sat, I sat looking at me. It it's just a pointless task. And I think things like that need to be ironed out, to be honest. If we, if we want the sport to go the way it's going, and we want, we want respect for everyone else, including other gamekeepers, and including people that shoot and things like that, people need to, th people need to think what they're doing. Um, like shooting stuff off in the middle of the streets and things like that with people about. And they need to think about what they're doing. They need to really think about what they're doing and their audience. And as soon as you've got a slingshot in your hand, a cap in your hand, you're an, you're an ambassador to the sport. You are, and the future of the progression of where we're going. So, when you let go of that pouch, you need to be thinking about where that steel shot or that lead ball is going to be ending up and the outcome of it. And I think we are going in the right way, but I think a, a few more people need to, to have a good think about what they're doing and why they're doing it on the weekend and why they're driving about and filling the boot full. Full of keepers pheasants and not even using them or just dumping them on the side of the road or I've known that's before run well like years years gone by run run lurches on hares and just sling them in a hedge and things like that and just waste them. And that's just never been that's just never been me. It's either always been used. Anything that's I've ever shot, if I can eat it, I'll eat it. If I can't the dogs will. Yeah. It's as simple it's as simple as that. Or otherwise I won't do it. Yeah. Otherwise I won't do it. And yeah, I just, want, I just want a message to get across that if lads are thinking about going out the weekend and filling the boot full of the keeper's pheasants, just think of the bigger picture and think about that keeper might have a couple of kids, so that he's got a feeding house and it's his job, it's his profession and stuff like that. Have, a, have that little bit of respect. Have that little bit of respect. Keepers now are now getting protection dogs, they're spending good money on these dogs and security trail cameras, activation cameras, like you wouldn't believe. And the security in the states that I know has upped tenfold. There's a picture of a feather on the back, which is done still. Hey there. Say that, boy.
Maybe a bit more. Maybe. So Sam, what's, what's, the, what's the biggest problem you face as a keeper? Um, I'd, I'd say probably bird, bird health, um, getting the birds to the point of a shoot they where they're in peak condition. Um, anything from heavy periods of rain to thunderstorms to contractors cutting crops, um, anything like that can affect a bird's health and their ability to absorb the right nutrients they can from the food. They can get disease like hexameter, um, coxie, worms, everything. The pheasant's will in life is not to survive, I'll put it that way. So we do our best as keepers to, to, to keep them alive. and. Uh, Put everything else by doing multivitamins, medicating them when we need them, getting vets out if we need them. If we think some, if we think something's wrong with them, we get, we've got we've got um, specialist vets that come out and have a look at the birds. Um, but I'd say that's probably the most yeah the, the, that's probably the most stressful part for me as a keeper is just the bird health. If you can get that right, you you're, you're on a you're on a you're on a winning path. Um, everything else can be can be managed. Birds wandering can be managed. Pest predators can be managed. Stuff like disease and things like that, you, unless you're on it re really, really quickly, can can have a real, real big impact on a on a shoot, on a on an estate, and um, on your returns for the year. So I'd probably say that, to be honest, is bird health. Um, it's important to get your birds from a decent game farmer, um, someone who knows what they're doing. Um, and we've used the same person for the past three or four years and been been very, very happy with the birds that he's provided with us and we've had virtually no issues with disease at all and if we have we've always we've always got onto it very, very quickly. Um, I'd say that's probably the biggest, most stressful issue for me is me checking my phone on the weather app, uh, seeing seeing what's what, see, seeing when it's gonna rain, if it's gonna thunder at night, me thinking birds are gonna be sat there soaking wet in the morning, getting cold, and then once their body temperature drops, they don't wanna eat as much, and if they're not eating as much, they're not growing as much, and it's, it's, yeah, it's, just, a, it's just a big chain like that, so. I'd say bird health is, is my main concern, but well, it's, it's all in the thought, isn't it? That's what we are really, gamekeepers, so we've gotta look after the, the pheasants as best we can. Hey, bud. <laughs>